Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Divot for Thursday evening, October 5th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center, your local weather office, and your local officials. Well, we continue to track Tropical Storm Nate uh, has become a tropical storm, but is inland, moved into uh, Nicaragua and now Honduras this evening, centered somewhere in here, bringing torrential rainfall and the potential for life-threatening mudslides and inland flooding uh, to Central America. Lots of convection going on in this area of the world right now. You can see Nate is really a small circulation embedded within a very large monsoonal gyre around it and uh, is kind of surrounded by a lot of deep convection. In fact, some interesting small-scale effects have happened today, uh, such as this big blob of thunderstorms to the southwest. The outflow from that has actually moved over Nate and is imposing some southwesterly wind shear, which is a bit stronger than anticipated today. And so there's a bit of wind shear uh, interrupting the system right now, but it's overland anyway, and uh, we didn't expect any strengthening today. Now the shear is, uh, in theory, going to relax as the system moves out over the northwestern Caribbean, and by tomorrow the environment will likely favor at least some strengthening of the storm, as we've discussed in prior days. Now we're going to have to wait to see what it looks like when it gets out over water here, because while it's over land, we really, we really don't know anything about how it's going to evolve. These monsoonal features are always a little tricky because, again, there's this really large kind of circulation feature within which Nate is embedded, and there's actually a really strong low-level jet associated with the monsoon uh, cutting across Central America into the southwestern Caribbean right now. Very, very fast winds in the middle levels of the atmosphere, and this uh, jet will eventually get redirected toward the north here around the eastern side of Nate as Nate moves out over the Caribbean, and how the jet and the small storm interact will be key. And uh, the big thing is that this is going to start accelerating this rather quickly off to the north, perhaps uh, over the northeastern Yucatan here and into the Gulf of Mexico, and it'll start making the storm move very quickly, and that will play a role in its intensity forecast later. Let's take a look at the water vapor imagery. We see the big feature again is this big upper level trough in the Gulf of Mexico. This is backing away toward the west. Lots of southwesterly flow aloft over the northwest Caribbean right now, so lots of high shear north of Nate for the moment. But again, this is this upper low is kind of getting out of the way, moving toward the west, and so this southwesterly flow will become slower and more out of the southeast instead, more aligned with the low-level flow by tomorrow and Saturday, and this will likely result in lower shear as Nate comes north. So wind shear not expected to be a huge impediment and neither really is the dry air. There is a lot of dry air here. Most of this, again, is going to get shoved west, and uh, Nate will remain embedded in this moist monsoonal environment. And although some dry entrainment usually occurs in the Gulf of Mexico and probably will once this gets toward the coast of the United States, uh, it's not expected to really uh, prevent intensification entirely. So the, the big things you normally look for are dry air and wind shear. Not huge impediments at this time, at least it appears so. Uh, but there are some other things we're going to be watching for a lot depends on what Nate's structure is when it gets, off, gets out over the water here. We really don't know what it's going to look like around here at this time tomorrow, and this will matter a lot because, again, this is actually a pretty small circulation despite what it's embedded in around it. And these small circulations are hard to predict uh, for intensity because they can strengthen and weaken very quickly and they're more fragile. So a lot of things can happen with them. They can spin up quickly, but they're also easier to destroy. So a lot will depend on its structure and how strong it is by the time it gets to the Yucatan, because by the time it gets here, it's going to start accelerating very quickly off to the north. And uh, this is the GFS 500 millibar chart for early Saturday morning, and this is where Nate would be emerging off of the Yucatan. Very, very strong mid-level flow out of the south-southeast here, pushing the system northward, and this will be moving rather quickly uh, toward the U.S. Gulf Coast, and from this point, it'll only take maybe a day uh, or maybe a day and a half uh, to get to the United States from here. So pretty quick crossing of the Gulf of Mexico, and because of this very strong background flow, it might actually be kind of hard for this system to maintain a well-defined circulation uh, around the west side. You'll see very, very strong winds out of the south on the east side, and then very, very little north wind on the west side. And in this kind of a situation, it's similar to when we're watching tropical waves coming toward the Caribbean. If the trade winds here are too strong and you have just big easterly flow, we often talk about how it's hard to close the circulation, get westerlies on the south side, and that inhibits development. The system may, may not be open. We'll probably have a closed circulation here, but the same principle still applies. If one side of the storm is very, very weak relative to the other, 
then that causes problems because the, the circulation is not picking up ocean fluxes in a 360 degree circle and it's not getting radial convergence in a 360 degree circle. So it makes it difficult to maintain a healthy vertical circulation. And uh, because of this, we could see it struggle a little bit. Uh, and that doesn't mean it will necessarily not intensify at all, but it could limit how quickly the system intensifies. But a lot of this is kind of uncertain right now. Again, we really want to see what this looks like tomorrow evening when it gets up in here. And once we've seen it over water for a, a day or so, we'll probably know a lot more by tomorrow night about the intensity forecast. But for now, we're waiting for it to emerge over water and we'll see what happens. As far as the track forecast goes, we've had some questions answered today. We talked last night in the video yesterday about uh, this area near Florida, this big trough that you can see in the low levels here uh, that has been developing, was in the Bahamas yesterday, and it's now moved west, and you can see where it is. We talked about the comparison between the GFS and the European, where the European had a weaker system here and a piece of energy off to the north, which prolonged uh, diabatic forcing and caused the ridge to be weaker east of Florida and which allowed Nate to come farther east and move into Florida instead, unlike the GFS, which is farther west in Louisiana. It turns out that this morning the GFS ended up being right. The short-term forecast uh, aligned exactly with what the GFS anticipated. You can see this nice little closed flow here, which is not going to develop or anything, uh, but it's a manifestation of most of the low-level wave energy getting pushed into the Gulf of Mexico instead of leaking northward like the European had. So the euro was dead wrong on a short-term forecast yesterday. And what this means is that the European, as of today's runs, has now switched toward the GFS in a big way and shows a much stronger ridge here uh, near and east of Florida. I'm just showing you the GFS here for reference, but the euro now looks very similar. So we've now got more agreement amongst the models about Nate's track. Because of this stronger ridge east of Florida, it's forcing the storm farther west. It's this, uh, this trough rotating around, uh, the one I just showed you here, as this rotates around, since this one is also stronger, once it gets to this part, it also really helps pinwheel Nate toward the northwest for a bit. So both of those things combined, the low here, the big ridge that will form east of Florida, shove Nate pretty much west of Florida. At this point, it's going to be kind of hard to get this all the way up into the Florida panhandle like some of the runs we're showing yesterday. Instead, we're really focusing on the area from central Louisiana to Alabama. This section of coastline it really seems to be the target zone now for Nate's U.S. landfall. And of course, there will be some uncertainty here, and you can see some track shifts left or right over the next couple of days, but the track forecast is more certain today than it was before. So we're, we're targeting the central Gulf Coast here for a, a, an eventual landfall and folks from uh, western Louisiana through the western Florida panhandle should be preparing for potential impacts. The eastern side of this will likely be much, much heavier uh, for, we kind of talked about this already, but for the same reason we'll have a lot of heavy weather and wind and rain on the east side, perhaps less weather on the west side. Um, so it'll be mainly near the landfall point and then east of that landfall point where we'll see the worst weather. Uh, but you'll get details from your National Weather Service local office once uh, the landfall point approaches and you can uh, get detailed impacts for your area from them. Here's the forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Tropical storm warning still up for the coasts of Nicaragua and Honduras. Flash flooding, again, the primary concern here from heavy rainfall. And in general, in Central America, this is, again, a large monsoonal gyre region. So lots of heavy rainfall throughout this area, pushing up into the Yucatan Peninsula, where, again, heavy rainfall will be a primary concern. But if we see intensification over the water tomorrow, we might expect some strong winds in the northeastern Yucatan as well. So keeping an eye on that as the system moves north. Hurricane watches are in effect here for that reason, uh, just in case it intensifies rather quickly. And then once it gets into the Gulf again, expected to be a hurricane here. We talked about some of the potential factors that could inhibit Nate a little bit, but that doesn't mean it won't strengthen at least some. And it very well could be a hurricane here and is currently forecast to be one uh, by the Hurricane Center and strengthen through landfall in the North Gulf Coast. And again, uh, the primary impacts are usually in the form of storm surge and inland flooding, uh, but some heavy wind, if this is a hurricane, could cause wind damage near the landfall point. So uh, stay tuned to your local National Weather Service products and the National Hurricane Center for the latest information for your local area. And uh, do get prepared as this could arrive by as soon as Sunday morning uh, for landfall, and we could see impacts as soon as Saturday afternoon or evening approaching the coast. So preparations will need to be completed by around Saturday morning before adverse weather begins to arrive. That's it for tonight. Thanks for watching.